Is AI making programmers faster? Most people think so. However, this study says otherwise. So I read the entire 50 pages to figure out why are some developers slower when using AI? And what can we do to not make those mistakes? This is the main study by a company called Meter. And these guys have worked both with OpenAI and Anthropic. So they're pretty legit. Now, before the study, the researchers predicted that AI will speed up the developers by 24%. Surprisingly, the AI tools actually slowed them down by 19%. So I'm not gonna waste your time, I'm just gonna show you the results. This is the impact that using AI had. There are actually some additional costs when using AI, such as reviewing the AI output, prompting, or waiting on the AI that slowed the developers down even further. This is why I'm making this video. If you don't know what you're doing, AI will actually slow you down. However, if you watch until the end, you'll know how to avoid all of these mistakes and how to actually boost your developer productivity. Now, to start with, who even were the developers in the study? Well, it was a group of 16 senior open source maintainers with an average of 10 years of experience. Also, these guys were not AI noobs. 93% of them have used LLMs before and 44% of them had prior experience with Cursor. Now, the main AI tool used in this study was Cursor Pro, with Cloth 3.7 as the model. By the way, as I was recording this video, a new study from GitHub themselves was released. So it's gonna be very interesting to see if this study confirms the finding of the first study or if the results are different, but more on that later. So here is how the experiment worked. It was a randomized controlled trial. In total, they did 246 GitHub issues and each developer coin flipped to find out whether he will be using AI or not. Now, before they wrote any code, first the developers guessed how long each task would take both with AI and without AI and the rules were super simple. With AI, you were free to use basically anything, cursor, claw, ChatGPT, whatever you want. However, without AI, you couldn't use any LLMs at all. Now you might be thinking, okay, David, but what exactly got measured? Well, the clock started when the developer began working on the issue and it only stopped after the pull request was reviewed, approved and merged. And here's actually a very interesting visual from the study of how it broke down. So first, as you can see, there is a list of different GitHub issues. Those were split into two categories, AI disallowed and AI allowed, where the developers worked on the issue until completion. Then the researchers calculated the change in time from AI. Now, most shockingly, it was actually faster when the developers didn't use any AI tools. This goes completely contrary to everyone's predictions. Experts, participants, everybody was predicting that AI would speed up those developers. However, the findings of the study were the exact opposite. By the way, Anthropic just released a brand new AI model, Claude Opus 4.1. And what did we do? We instantly added into Vectal. So if you have Vectal Pro, you can just go to the model selector and select from any of the models, enable Opus 4.1, save it, and you can start using it inside of Vectal working on all of your tasks. So again, go to Vectal.ai, try it yourself, you can get started completely for free. That's right, the AI made the developers slower. On average, each task took 19% longer. And this applied for short tasks, long tasks, easy tasks, hard tasks, everything showed the same slowdown. Here's another visualization from this study. On the x-axis, we can see the implementation time in hours. So most of the GitHub issues took roughly two hours. And on the y-axis, we can see the percentile of observed implementation time. So this begs the question, why did the AI I slow the developers down? Well, I think there are three main reasons. Number one, lack of self-reliance. These devs relied on AI even for simple things that would be faster manually, especially for a senior developer. Number two, a lot of the devs already knew the answer. Keep in mind, these guys had five plus years of experience on these repositories. So AI didn't really add any new insights or knowledge. Plus a lot of these code bases were huge. I mean, over a million lines, which easily overwhelmed the models, limiting how much help they can do. So here is my expert opinion as one of the world's leading AI developers. There are multiple problems. First of all, this study was only done on 16 developers, which is a very small sample size. It was also tested with senior devs who already have built-in ways of working, certain habits, certain code style. These guys are way more picky about what they accept and what they reject. Plus, they only used cursor. They didn't use any advanced AI agents such as Claude Code, Devin, Codex, nothing like that. Plus, AI actually helps beginners far more than senior devs. And by the way, I'm not the only one who found flaws in the study. This person figured out that using your own repo isn't that effective. By far, the biggest unlock this guy had was when using AI to navigate unfamiliar repos. Right? If you join a company and you have to navigate a complicated code base, you can learn the code base way faster if you have access to AI tools. Another great point is that AI tools don't magically speed you up. Rather, they give you leverage only if you know how to use them, which is what my entire channel is basically all about. So if you want to be an effective AI developer, make sure to subscribe. All right. So even though the developers in this study were slower, should devs use AI today? And the answer is 
Yes, even though this was a very interesting and unexpected outcome, I'm still very bullish on coding with AI. But if you want to use AI tools seriously and effectively, there are a few important things you must know. So as I promised, let's take a look at the GitHub study. So this is Thomas Domke, the CEO of GitHub. Either you embrace AI or get out of this career. In the latest GitHub study, a striking trend was revealed. Those who persist beyond early skepticism emerge with dramatically higher ambition, technical fluency, and job satisfaction. AI is on track to write 90% of code within the next two to five years. Also, there are new skills that matter now, such as agent orchestration, iterative collaboration, critical verification, prompt engineering, you name it. So while this GitHub study found that AI was time-saving, that wasn't the main outcome. The main outcome was the shift in ambition. Basically, AI allowed developers to dream bigger. And as I predicted, using AI also had a massive implications for education. This is what I like to call vibe learning. So if you want to be on the cutting edge of AI, listen to the CEO of GitHub and start adopting AI tools. The first tool that all of you should adopt is Vectal. It's an AI agent for task management that can help you achieve any goal 10 times faster. And yes, this is the tool I've built and it's saving me many hours per week. So if you want to instantly make yourself more productive, try it yourself for free. Just go to Vectal.ai and type in whatever goal you want to achieve. Now, if you've been watching my channel, which you should, you will know that AI is much more efficient for building MVPs than changing risky production code. And that's really the main problem of the study. They only tested AI on existing repositories. They didn't build anything from scratch. And that's a problem because building an MVP is now 10 times faster thanks to AI, maybe even more honestly. However, writing production-ready code that follows existing standards is only 30 or 40% faster if you apply everything from this video. If you don't know anything, you'll actually be slower, like the study suggests. So here are seven tips you must know about coding with AI. Number one, use the right model for the right task. Not all LLMs are created equal. You need to check its context size, compare the official benchmark scores, do a little vibe test yourself. And a great tip actually is that if you use something like Claude for Sonnet or Claude for Opus, just check it with a different model like O3. Don't use the same model from the same company to verify the code that an AI agent wrote. So if you use OpenAI model like O3 or GPT-5 coming soon, just use Gemini 2.5 Pro from Google to check the output. Pro tip number two, use AI to build new features. When you start a new project or add a new feature, AI speedups can be insane, 10x, 20x, maybe even 100x if you really know what you're doing. AI agents can help you design an entire code base in a matter of minutes. Plus, you can quickly test all kinds of different ideas from unique angles. Tip number three, if you are gonna be using AI on large code bases, you can absolutely do it, but make sure to follow these rules. Number one, make small focus changes only. Number two, avoid huge refactors in one go. Split it into four, five, six stages. Number three, work in a feature branch only. Make sure to create a new branch and work there. Do not work on staging, on main, none of that. Also, never push directly to main. No matter how tempting it might be, it will bite you in the ass in the long run. And lastly, commit often. Do a GitHub commit every 10 to 15 minutes. With AIs, you can have them write the GitHub message, write the commit message. For example, if you use Cloud Code, it knows already what you're doing. Same with Cursor, same with Windsurf. All of these AI tools, they pay attention to what you're doing. So they can just write the commit message in a matter of half a second, instead of you writing a short one or being lazy or leaving it empty, God forbid. AI coding tip number four, how to avoid errors from the start. And this is the best strategy, right? Start by having the AI analyze the code base. Do not rush into changes. Tell it to find all of the relevant files, make a list of them, and read through all of them. Also, actually put in more effort yourself and provide the LLM with tons of context. Obviously, keep it related to what you're actually doing. Next, and this is uh, something that most people like to skip, but try to understand the feature or the bug yourself first. I know this is not sexy, right? Everybody wants to delegate everything to AI, but if you actually do this, if you spend a few minutes trying to understand what's happening yourself, you can move way faster and you'll be able to spot when the AI is going off track. And then a lot of software development fundamentals, such as running linters, type checks, automated tests, to catch as many issues as early as possible. Tip number five, discipline equals speed. With the correct workflows, you can work way faster. Your main takeaway here should be to spend more time before you have the AI write any lines of code. The more time you spend before, the faster you can build a feature and the less errors you'll run into. What I do with every single feature, I create a markdown file. I type in my exact vision. I lay out the steps I necessary. I lay out what I don't understand. I lay out what I already know. And only then, only after like 20 minutes of me writing into a markdown file manually with my fingers, only then I let the AI do any 
code changes at all. Pro tip number six, context engineering. Clear prompts equal clear output. Be specific about the inputs, outputs, and constraints of every single feature. And make sure to actually create a Markdown file for every feature. This is very OP because you, it can be like a scratch pad for the AI agent to write notes and for you to refine your vision as you work. Really, this is like non-negotiable for me. Also, make sure to just tag all of the relevant files. Don't waste the AI's time, right? The AI can waste your time, but you can waste its time. If you already know where the feature should be implemented or which files the bug is in, tag them. It will make your AI agents much better. Trust me. Also, start building internal documents of all the features, all the parts of your app, all the data types, architecture, everything. So you can easily tag these docs and not only speed up your own learning curve or when you hire a new developer, you can get them up to speed faster, but you can tag these docs for AI and the AI can easily learn and quickly learn how your code base works. Now, you always have to remind yourself that you, as the human, are the decision maker. Make sure to keep the big picture in the view. Don't trust the AI blindly. Use it for what it's good at but don't trust it for what it's bad at, such as creativity, taste, naming, code base architecture, the most important things really. When something inevitably breaks, the best thing you can do is to use AI to understand the root issue yourself. I cannot stress this enough. Upskilling yourself with AI is the biggest hack. It's the biggest cheat code that nobody's talking about. Everybody's like, okay, build this, vibe code this, vibe code that. Guys, you can literally upskill yourself three times faster than you could otherwise. Before AI models, it would take you multiple years to become proficient at a programming language. With AI, you can ask hundreds of questions every single day, and it will teach you, it will reiterate, it will explain it in a different way, it will browse the web to get examples. It's insane. Use it for learning, use it for upskilling yourself, and not only will you benefit from the exponential curve of AI, but you will add another exponential that's even more steep of your own AI skill set. Now, no matter what, do not ever delegate your thinking to AI. I don't really envy the new generation because all of these kids are raised with ChatGPT, but you need to make product decisions. You need to stay in charge. You need to have that taste. You need to trust your, you need to trust and develop your own judgment. Do not ask the AI what the next feature should be. You as the founder should know that. So instead of listening to AI, listen to your own intuition plus your own users. Talk to your users as much as possible. I know Everybody in Silicon Valley, in the startup world says this, but guys, until you actually run a startup, you don't realize how important this is. The only thing that really matters is what the users want. So build something that the users want. Now, since you watched the entire video, I'm gonna give you a little bonus that I discovered today, and that is giving cloud code custom hooks. So what is a hook? If you don't know, a hook is a script that runs before or after Claude does something, like editing, running a tool, or stopping. It lets you auto-format code, block risky commands, run tests, send alerts, or really do anything you want. Like some people literally have it play a sound to notify them, oh, CloudCo has finished running. So basically, hooks are automated control over what CloudCo does, allowing you to customize it in infinite possible ways. Let me show you. So here I am inside of Cursor, I'm gonna show you three different Cloud Code hooks all of you should really set up. And the beauty of this, it takes like two minutes to set up. So let me show you. First hook is this one, append ultra thing. This one I borrowed from McKay Riley on Twitter, so shout out to him. But basically the way this hook works is that anytime your prompt ends with dash u, it appends this prompt right here. Use the maximum amount of ultra think. Take all the time you need. It's much better if you do too much research and thinking than not enough. You have to realize ultra think, this actually has influence on the reasoning effort of Cloud Code. Enthropic built this in into Cloud Code. It can recognize four different words. Think, think hard, think harder, and ultra think. That is the most powerful level of reasoning effort. So this isn't just some weird prompting technique. This actually directly impacts how many tokens will go into the reasoning effort of your next Cloud Code response. Now the next hook I build myself, and this one will be automatically appended anytime you finish your prompt with dash E. And here's what it says. Above other relevant logs, your job is to think harder about what these logs say. Give me a simpler and short explanation. Do not jump to conclusions. Do not make assumptions. Quiet your ego assume you know nothing. If you've worked with Claude for models or any Claude models, you know like the, you're absolutely right. Or, oh, I see the issue now. This is beyond frustrating, right? And by adding lines like this, you greatly eliminate it. So basically the way I use this Claude code hook is for understanding logs, right? Maybe I paste in 500 lines of backend logs and I do dash E, which is way faster than typing these six sentences, right? And Claude code will basically explain the logs to me, suggest what the next step is, and why that should be the next step and answer in short. So I use this multiple times a day and save so much time. Now, the last hook is actually my favorite because this one I use virtually after every single prompt. I mean, you cannot go wrong by sending this one 
And by the way, I posted this on Twitter and both of my tweets got a lot of traction. By the way, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you really are missing out. But anyways, this is my golden prompt. This is like, this is the David Andre prompt. So anytime my message ends with dash D, this gets appended at the end. Think harder, answer in short, keep it simple. Really, you cannot go wrong with this. It improves every single output, no matter if you're asking a question or if you're fixing a bug or implementing a feature. If you just add this at the end of every single prompt, Claude code will perform better. I can guarantee you that. Unfortunately, typing these eight words is way slower than just typing two characters, which is the power of the hook. Now, to make these hooks work, you have to actually add them to your settings.json file inside of the .claude folder. And again, if you get stuck at any point, just go into Vectal, ask it a question, and it will tell you how to set it up. The reason for that is Vectal uses Perplexity Pro in the backend. So if you use Vectal, you literally don't have to pay for Perplexity Pro. Anyways, here's how it should look like inside of the settings.json. So obviously at the top, you have your permissions, list of allowed commands, list of denied commands. All of these are in the new society, by the way. If you're serious about AI, make sure to join the new society. But then at the bottom, you need to append the hooks to kind of register them so that they actually run automatically. Cloud code doesn't use them. These get executed by themselves on different actions, right? So one of the possible ones is user prompt submit. Anytime the user submits a prompt, we check whether any of these hooks should be activated. And by the way, I just asked Vectal to browse the web and find the main hooks in Cloud code. Here they are. So user prompt submit hook, the one we're using here, pre tool use hook. So before using a tool, you can customize again, endless amounts of actions or checks or tests that should run before Cloud Code uses a tool. Then after it uses a tool, right? Maybe there's a quick uh, backend test you want to run after it uses a tool or some linter. You can easily do that. Or a notification hook, right? A lot of people have a sound or like a sentence, like a human voice speaking out when Cloud Code finishes because um, it can sometimes run for a long time and maybe you switch to a different tab and do something else. So yeah, with hooks, you can customize your Cloud Code experience to your liking. And that's why I highly recommend you Take two minutes and add these hooks into your Cloud Code setup. It's going to save you so much time. But hooks are just one part of Cloud Code. There is sub-agents, there is commands. Cloud Code is amazing. There is a lot to learn. In fact, I made an entire workshop called the Cloud Code Mastery on how to become a top 1% of user of Cloud Code. I've used it for well over 300 hours, basically every single day since it released for like four to eight hours a day every day. And in this workshop, not only do I explain how you can go from a complete beginner to top 1% Cloud Code expert, but also I give you all of my files. I give you all of my prompts, such as the main Cloud.md I'm using. I also give you my settings.local.json, my protocol.md for all GitHub protocols. All of my Cloud Code subagents, commands, the entire stack, everything you might need. Plus, we host weekly calls where you can ask anything if you get stuck. So if you're serious about coding with AI, make sure to join the U Society. It's going to be linked below the video. And if you want to participate in future AI developer studies, go to this link. This is from the original study, so shout out to them. A lot of this video would not be possible without them. With that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I wish you a wonderful, productive week. See ya.